Alright, yo, what is good, guys? Welcome back. Today, we're finally going to be going over strings and processes inside of 5M PC checking, quite possibly the best type of detections you guys can use. Now, I'm going to be going over step number three and four inside of my guide, which you guys can find in the first link in the description. Also, guys, it is fucking freezing in the UK right now. This is why I have everything on. I literally am about to go put on a coat. I'm about to fucking die. So yeah, dedication. All right, guys, so last video we went into registry. Now we're going to be going more over into the processes type of things. And it's also going to tie in quite nicely in step three of my free SS guide. So first things first, we've got to download all the tools from the detect tools page. It is literally detect.ac slash tools, my screen share tool that I've made myself to make sure you guys can stand on business when it's come to these screen shares and PC checks. And you guys never, ever get bypassed again. This is why I'm putting it all together to stop these guys cheating once and for all. So now we're going to go ahead and download all four of these. We're going to download band parser, prefetch parser, then the two main ones, the PCASVC executed and the process parser. And I'll be back with you guys once I've downloaded those four. All right, now guys, I've got all four of these free tools installed. They are all open source tools made by one of our detection dev teams named eSpoken. Now we're just going to go ahead and head into the first one of these tools. I'm not going to go to the service ones just yet. We're just going to start off with the band parser just to kind of show you guys how these work. So of course, this is okay to run. It's an open source tool. Now, this is just going to start by processing the band entries and it's also going to search through the USN journal for any type of replaces or data truncations on any of these files inside of BAM. So if we go ahead and full screen this, we can then see not signed only. We can go ahead and then see in instance only. We can also see flagged only by Yara rules. And as you can see here, it has caught my vape light, my vape before, Sapphire, Zen click, another vape another vape light so these are all the rules that we have inside of this tool you guys can then find maliciously launched files using bam and it's really helpful having these three things now if we go over to the next one which is going to be the prefetch parser it's very very similar so i'll catch you guys when i'm back on prefetch all right guys now the prefetch one has loaded up it takes a little while to go up just because we have some slightly unoptimized additional dependencies now if we go ahead and full screen this one exact same thing we got unsigned files we got generic flags as well so we can have show flags only so you got entropy core all of these clients from Minecraft and from Fiverr. We can also have only an instance. So as you can see, there's nothing in instance at the moment. And now we're going to go ahead and go look at just unsigned files. You guys can look through all of these. And what you guys need to do in this step is you need to log down all of the unsigned files and all of the flagged files in instance and all of the executed and deleted files. So when it says here, is it present? And it says no. So like here, as you can see, it's got four here that say no. You guys want to log down all five of these directories. And then this is what you you're going to then bring up later when we go into step six and start recovering files. So you guys need to log these down on a notepad or something of the sort. And now this is prefetch done. And now we're just going to go ahead and move over into the PCA SVC parser, which is now where we're going to start going into processes, why they're so great, why they're so useful and why they're the best thing to use in a screen share. Now, if we launch up the PCA SVC executor, we're going to click run. It's going to pass it and going to run through a couple of the proof of execution processes then it's also going to search for the usn journal too just to be helpful see if you guys can find anything any replaces at all because it's all good if the file is present but if it's been replaced then that's when we're going to have an issue because then we don't know if it's actually that legitimate file that has been launched so if we give it two seconds it's just going to come up with a notepad in a second and let us know if there's any changes okay guys so as you can see there has been a change so you can see there's been a replacement for system informer at this date a data truncation and for system informer twice i can confirm these two are completely false i update my system informer before this so we can be certain that everything inside of this program is completely legitimate so we're going to exit out of this and then we're going to go back to this long list here so what you guys want to do is you guys want to check the not signed ones as you can see here the not signed ones are perfectly fine here now here this is where you guys are going to have problems because this is one of my cheats this is one of my cheats as well so you guys want to be logging down from here all the unsigned files unsigned basically means unverified from microsoft so that means it isn't a normal file that would be on a 
user's computer. It means it's been externally downloaded and been ran on the computer. So it's definitely something we can consider to be a flag. Also, we want to be taking a look for all the generic ones. As you can see, the file is deleted or the not signed ones you guys want to recover. Please keep in mind things inside of the temp folder may not be able to be recovered. If they cannot be recovered from the temp folder, chances are that it was deleted by Windows themselves. And you guys just need to leave that. You cannot hold of things being deleted in temp. So for example, this, if we can't find it in the temp folder, when we go ahead and recover, then it's going to be unfortunate. We can't do anything about it. All the things like this, you want to log all of these down and try and find them. Like, as you can see here, that's a cheat that I've executed and deleted. So you guys really, really want to go through this. And I caught somebody using a script bypass doing this exact method. You guys want to log all these down. The not signed and the file is deleted as well in two separate columns. So you guys remember when it comes to step number six, and that is where we're going to go and start recovering. But we've got one more final process to go through. This is going to be our diag track and app info parser. Now, if we launch up the process parser now, this is going to be running and it's going to pass our diag track and app info. This is really, really crucial. These two app info is for files that has been ran with administrator. So when you launch a file, sometimes it will say, would you like to let this app make administrative privileges on your device, something of the sort, and you accept that that's going to log an app info. And as you can tell, a lot of cheats do that. Diag track, on the other hand, is a type of compatibility computer user assistant, I believe. So this is going to log files that have been ran and it's going to be in a less volatile memory region so you guys can see this later on after they've launched it it's a really really good poe or proof of execution artifact so i'm going to start off with die track it's going to pass the whole thing we're then going to look for not signed only and deleted only now please keep in mind if at the start it says hashtag un hashtag and it says deleted do not worry about this this is something that needs to be fixed just putting it out there now now you guys want to go through and check the not signed only grab all of the not signed only files and you guys also want to check for the deleted files as well and the flagged files as well. But please keep in mind of the UN. Now that is the diag track parser. Now we're going to go back over to the app info parser. So it's slightly different. We click return back to app info. It's going to bring up these. You guys want to get all of the deleted ones, all of the unsigned ones and all of the flagged ones. You guys want to pop that in a list too. And now you should have a list full of all the unsigned slash flagged files on the system and all of the deleted files on the system that have been executed. And now you have a gold mine of data that you guys can use moving forward. And now this is when we're going to go ahead and move on over into step number four five, which if you take a look on my sheet, it's where we're going to be going ahead. Sorry, step number four, my apologies. We're going to go ahead and use this program named everything. We're going to go ahead and run these files through everything after making sure we get our proof of execution because any proof of execution will be overwritten once we run it again. And we're also going to be dragging and dropping these files in virus total too. So I'm just going to bring up a cheat and show you guys how we're going to do this. All right, guys. So what you guys are going to want to do is you want to go ahead and download everything from that link right there. Once it's been installed, you'll be able to launch on the user's computer and it will look something like this and this will search all of your drives you have on your computer for these files as long as they're user files it'll be able to find them now we're going to go ahead and find our cheat so one of the cheats we had was zen clicker we're going to go ahead and pop this in here and click it and paste it's going to paste in it's going to match the directory it's going to find the file we got the proof of execution we double click on it and as you can see it's a cheat no minecraft found etc also we can do the exact same thing for like script.exe by them as you can see here if we had an unsigned file or executed file named script or anything we find it in here we'd be able to launch it see it's a cheat we've already got our proof of execution from the actual uh, tools themselves and now we can confirm that the user has been cheating with this now when it comes to this we need to be very careful that we have our proof of execution before we launch this because i have done it way too many times where i found the cheat and i've launched it and i've completely forgotten to log my proof of execution really really dumb of me but make sure you guys do that. Now, next thing, sometimes people will make files inaccessible to be launched. What we're going to do is we're going to drag and drop it into virus total. So we open up the link from virus total right here. We'll open up on the user's computer. We'll take the cheat and then we want to drag and drop it in. In this case, I'm going to be using script as it's slightly easier for me to show you how it works. So I'm just going to go ahead and get script up a second. Now we have script here. We're just going to go ahead and drag and drop it onto here. It's going to compute the hash. You're going to click confirm upload. Then it's going to upload to the site. You're going to wait for it to start its analysis and then here we go now we're going to wait for this dynamic analysis to completely finish and then we're going to look at two things which is e the names and we're going to look at the ip so i'll be right back with you once i've done that right now 
We now have the names that come up. The behavior, which is where we're going to see the IPs, is just having a load. So first things first, 14 out of 72, not too bad, but still pretty malicious. If you take a look at what it does, vicious PE, unsafe, nothing else really here, generics. Now, if we go over to the details tab, and we take a look down and we look for the names. Here, there may be a massive array of different names that this has been. So they've downloaded the cheat, they've renamed it to something else, and then they've gone ahead and launched it. You want to see what cheat it is, then you can come here. If it's got like script.exe and it's supposed to be, I don't know, like an AM Delta patch downloader, you know it's going to be a cheat and they've made it inaccessible and you can hold off this. And now that would be the last thing from step numbers three and four. Step number five, we're going to be going into how to recover files my personal best way to recover files and then how to also do static analysis on these recovered files if they're inaccessible. Basically dragging and dropping into virus total again. Uh, yes, guys, that is it. That is processes step number three and step number four. four from the cards free SS guide. As I said, it's the first link in the description. And as always, I own my own screen share tool. I try my best to make it the best possible. I'd really appreciate it if you guys would go ahead and purchase it down below and start using it as it is, in my opinion, the best tool on the market at the moment. We do weekly updates. We're consistently interactive with the community. We're staying up to date with bypasses. We have constant streams of people updating us with all the changes inside the bypassing world and in the digital forensics world. And I've also been doing this for over six years now. So you guys, should go and download the tech in the description it's the second link and go ahead and purchase your license today and stop getting bypassed by these cheaters now guys thank you very much and yes yeah, stay safe boys i'll catch you in a bit